Welcome back to a very special episode of Jarred. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Why are we extra special? Hello and welcome back to Jarred. The okay. bonus episode. I know. <laughs> this is the Jarred bonus episode. Oh god. Okay. If you're listening to this, you're a beloved patron. <laughs> Yes, yes, you are. If you listen to this, then you make great decisions in life, in general. <laughs> if you listen, if you're listening to this, then you paid five dollars for this episode. So we really hope that at least five dollars, at least. Uh, yeah. So, uh, no pressure. We hope, we hope we give you your money's worth in entertainment. If not, then we, I mean, we can't do refunds. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what we're trying to say is, um, it's this or nothing. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much so, yeah. we got a lot to cover, so I'm just going to gloss over the bullshit, just skip right over okay. it. Um, so, as, as our viewers, well, well, yeah, it would only be viewers, because we don't do this on Spotify. Uh, as our viewers would observe, me and Amber are dressed tonight. She's got on her NSYNC, sir, NSYNC shirt with uh, Justin Timberlake crossed out. <laughs> Fucking Jerry Hollowell style. Spice Girls, okay. And I've got my It's Britney Bitch shirt from the circus tour in 2009. We, so are, in, we are in solidarity with our girl is what we are. I, I do I do want to say this I mean it's not shocking but it is kind of shocking at the same time because you're a big Justin fan. I am. Like you you love Justin. I I've like, I've loved Justin for most of my life. I mean like when you've gone to his <sighs> concerts, haven't you? I, I okay look. <laughs> This was such a quick turn. I'm just trying it was, to like, no, process. No, it's, no, and it's not. And I mean, it's not anything I'm ashamed. Like, when NSYNC came out, like, I was, like, what? Like, between, like, eight I fucking eight, love nine. that shirt. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, when NSYNC came out, I was, like, eight or nine. So, like, I was in that perfect age range of boy band. Like, I got that full experience. Yeah. It was wonderful. I went to so many NSYNC concerts. I cannot count them. I'll be honest with you. Went to NSYNC concerts, Backstreet Boys. Of course, NSYNC was my preference. Um, and no, I was, I, and I mean, to a point, I still am, you know, a Justin fan. I'm not gonna, but I'm a very disappointed Justin fan. And at the time when all of this happened, you don't understand, especially at the age that we were at, you don't understand the effects things have until way later, of course, until your adulthood. And yeah, this is me standing in solidarity with Britney because I was too a Britney Spears fan. I had a dog named Britney that I had for 15 years. True story. And I'm disappointed in Justin. Quit framing That's your. I was just about to say, <laughs> what are you doing? Just full on framing. You. I'm fr- I'm, I'm give- <laughs> I don't look, think the guys look. have ever stood out so much. <laughs> look, <laughs> I'm trying to give our patrons what they want. I mean, I was gonna. It's Titties Patreon. is me. It's Patreon, not only fans. I was gonna no. say X marks the spot, but that was too cheap. <laughs> no, it is. It is a very interesting. It's it's very interesting to see because a lot of like the Justin fans I've seen throughout this have. They've been like, oh my god, get over it. It was 20 years ago. Like, they're on good yeah. terms now. Like, who cares? It was so long ago. But then, like, I can, I, I get where you're coming from. I mean, NSYNC was always my boy band preference. But I was always a bigger Britney fan than I was an NSYNC fan. So it's like, when they split up, I was like... I mean, I still liked NSYNC. But I didn't understand at the time everything yeah. that was, like, going into that breakup. But... Good for you. We love to see it. Fuck Justin Timberlake. 
Um, and I mean that too. Like at the time that even Cry Me a River came out, I didn't quite understand like all the references even to the video. Oh, I did. Until until prob. Well, I'm a dumbass. So <laughs> no. Well, so it, the girl looked just like Britney. Amber, I'm right up there with you on the dumbass level because Cry Me a River when because I oh, I was only uh, when when did that song when did that song come out? That's what you love to hear. <laughs> that's what yes, you love to hear. yes. Cry Me a River was 2003. Right. So I Crimea was, River was 2003. I'm quite sure. I was only you were eight. Thank you. Seven I, most of the year actually. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. So but at the time that so I fucking loved that song it was it crummy river was it was literally my favorite song at the time obviously i and i had no clue to the reference it wasn't until i watched the documentary literally just a few hours ago when they played when they sh- heard the snippet of crummy river after the justin britney breakup i was like whoa see the difference the difference here is that you were seven years old yeah Amber was 13. Yeah, I was 13, and I still didn't <laughs> fucking understand. <laughs> Which, I mean, it's not like I, I, like, paid attention to shit like that either. I mean, I just wasn't oh, that was type like, of 13. Oh, no, I, I, was I wasn't. all into the celebrity shit. I watched <sighs> E! News every night at 7.30. Like, I was all into it. I made my mom buy me Us Weekly magazines every week. I was so into Oh, shit. no, I was not that kind of kid. I was... Buy me the J14 magazines. Mm-mm. That way I can cut the pictures out and put them on my wall. I was that. <laughs> I was obsessed with celebrities. We were, That's probably we were why t- I have so much useless movie and celebrity knowledge now. It's like, I was just obsessed. Um, but we are still the same type of bitch to go to the same Britney Spears concert and not even realize that we were there at the same time. We didn't know each other at the time. We didn't. So, but we still went. I think anyone with a brain in the southern region where we're located was at that concert. Honestly, <laughs> I I mean I would I I would love to think so. It was, it was a fantastic concert. Well, as you may have guessed or gathered or gleaned, that's a nice little buzz <laughs> vocabulary word. Uh, we are going to be talking about the Britney Spears documentary today, which. Ryan just watched today, yep. even though he doesn't do anything all day ever. Um, Let me d- okay. <laughs> my defense being because I don't do anything all day at the moment because of this fucking lockdown. I didn't want to watch it when you sent the link at the beginning because if, because I'm not I would forget. So I thought I'll leave it to watch it again. I've watched it like three times since. Yeah, I, I had to watch it again today. True, I could have done that, and but then- I wanted it fresh. <laughs> Dougie waited until right before we started recording to watch the first, like, 30 minutes. So, <laughs> we're very well researched We are. Here. Well, we, well, well researched. the thing is, we know, we know um, that you two are going to educate us more than the documentary yeah. the, could, so. The point I mean, was a collective never conversation. Been, yeah. I've never been a Britney fan. Anyway. A commentary. Like that, we're, we'll, we'll get into the documentary, but there, there has been a lot that has happened following the documentary. Which I'm kind of surprised because I mean, like, with the with the thing that she the conservatorship that she is under, I didn't really, I knew people were gonna be, all you know, rustled after the documentary came out, but I didn't expect anything to actually happen. I guess. So, <laughs> I think the the first thing to happen, everyone was on like pins and needles watching Britney's. Instagram after the documentary dropped. It dropped last Friday, the 5th. I know that I was watching her Instagram all fucking weekend, just (laughs) waiting for her to post something, literally anything. It wasn't about what she posted, it was about when she was going to post. Because historically, it kind of seems like when stuff like this has come up in the past, she may have been covertly punished for it. Right. Which we'll get into. But um, she finally posted again, I think, Monday? Yes, it was Monday. She posted on Monday, and it was this, like, strange little video where she's just, like, in front of her camera, and she she knew what she was doing. She knew about the documentary. I have no doubt in my mind about that, because she made, all she said, she made a comment. It was like, um... It's the thing, or what did she say? It's the thing that everyone's been waiting for all week. The Super Bowl. But, like, yeah. the way she led up to it, it made you think that she was alluding to the yeah. documentary. Yeah. Yeah. 
And at this point, the Super Bowl had already come and gone. I mean, it was the day before. So it was just very weird timing, and it was... It just felt like very obvious subliminal messaging on her part. So that was strange. Um, then her boyfriend posted a story where... Oh. He called Britney Spears' dad, Jamie, a dick. Like, he straight up said, Jamie is a dick. Straight he's up was nothing, like... He's done nothing but cause <laughs> obstacles in our relationship. Like, he's a dick. Wow. And then, like, I feel like... If, if, if I'm remembering correctly, didn't, like, a paparazzi, like, catch him yes, after he yes. made that Instagram that was, story post? Yes. And he was basically like, yo, I said what I said. I said what I said, yes. Like, they caught him, like, coming out of the gym or something. And, of course, it was, like, TMZ, the scumbags of reporting. Of but, yes, they caught him coming out of the gym, and they were like, oh, you know, your Instagram story. He's like, yeah, he's a dick. <laughs> like, yeah, that's that's what no I said. No point beating around so. the bush. Like. I said what I said. <laughs> um, and then there was the conservatorship hearing yesterday, mm -hmm. which was it was about it was regarding her estate. It was not regarding her person, but still, it's a it's a small step in the right direction. Basically, what happened was her dad has been objecting to having this. Um, bank this i guess okay. is it a bank it's a it trust, is a bank. trust firm he's been objecting to them being involved in the conservatorship but the judge yesterday basically was like no nah, fuck that they are going to go half and half with you on the conservatorship so you cannot do what you want anymore within the financial realm of the conservatorship so now he's splitting his power with his bank which is the way it's supposed to be because if if he's been doing anything on the sly, if he's been taking a little out of Britney's pocket left and right, or if he's been using the money for stuff it's not supposed to oh, be used for, is. they're going to know about it. Like, there's not going to be any more sneaky shit yeah. with them involved. Oh, that, that reminds me of a comment that got said in the documentary, but I'll wait. What? This, when, is the board, this is about the documentary. The whole well, thing. I mean, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know if you had like a okay. But do you remember the <laughs> the part? I think it was. I cannot remember her name to save my life, but I think that she was a woman that they met in New York. They were trying to get like things started for Britney. This was way early on in her career, and he she was discussing how like it was her mom that was more involved, and Dad would come in and visit every now and then, and he was basically you know just oh, trying yeah. to see results. To make you know to kind of justify My daughter's all this, get rich and buy me a boat. That yes, one. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Like she, he, he just kept coming in and was like trying to, you know, justify all this money that they had put into trying to make Britney's career her career, and he and he made that comment like, "My daughter's gonna be so rich one day, she's gonna buy me a boat." Yeah. And I'm like, that. And that woman said, and, "That woman said, and that's yeah. all I have to say about Jamie's career." <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Like, yeah, she quit. She refused talking about him after that. She was like, mm. "Like that should tell you all that you need to know," and it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I saw. I think it was yesterday. I don't know. I don't know what day it aired. Wendy Williams oh. was talking about the documentary. And I, I don't watch her show, so I don't I don't know the man that just, she was talking to. She was she was talking to a man about the documentary. It's like I guess maybe one of her, I don't know I don't know. I took it that he worked there or was like somehow associated with her. I don't know, but um, she made mention that she still thinks that Jamie Spears is a good man. No, you know, you can't. Just, you know, you I'm, can't. I'm like. You cannot watch um, that documentary and have anything positive to say about her father. I'm sorry. That woman you're talking about is Kim Kamen. Yes, yes. I actually, yes. I've got the video up still, so it's like, you know, I remember seeing that. I'll just scroll back a bit. Don't give me your fact checker throughout. That's good. So, yes. She was, she well, was then, the senior director of marketing for Jive Records. Right. I. I don't, I don't know that, oh, no, something. I don't know when the major happenings or occurrences will cease after this documentary has come out, but the final or most current big thing to come of this is that Justin Timberlake <laughs> made a statement today, um, 
I wasn't impressed. I wasn't either. I, I'll, I'll read it. It's 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 not it's not too terribly long. He says, "I've seen the messages, tags, comments, and concerns, and I want to respond. I am deeply sorry for the times in my life where my actions contributed to the problem, where I spoke out of turn or did not speak up for what was right." I understand that I fell short in these moments and in many others and benefited from a system that condones misogyny and racism. I specifically want to apologize to Britney Spears and Janet Jackson both individually because I care for and respect these women and I know I failed. I also feel compelled to respond, in part, because everyone involved deserves better and most importantly because this is a larger conversation that I wholeheartedly want to be part of and grow from. The industry is flawed. It sets men, especially white men, up for success. It's designed this way. As a man in a privileged position, I have to be vocal about this. Because of my ignorance, I didn't recognize it for all that it was while it was happening in my own life. But I do not want to ever benefit from others being pulled down again. I have not been perfect in navigating all of this throughout my career. I know this apology is a first step and doesn't absolve the past. I want to take accountability for my own missteps in all of this as well as be a part of a world that uplifts and supports. I care deeply about the well-being of the people I love and have loved. I can do better and I will do better. First of all, the Britney thing happened 20 years ago. Well, mm -hmm. you know, not quite, but close enough. It took people coming for his neck on social media for him to realize, you fucked her over. The Janet Jackson thing happened 15 years ago, and it took people mm. coming for his neck on social media for him to realize. Thank I you. I mean, he told a radio show host that he fucked Britney Spears on air. He made a music video about Britney Spears. For a song about Britney Spears cheating on him, even though he cheated on her at least twice before she cheated on him. Bearing her damn likeness for that and symbolism exactly. towards her. And then not only that, this is what pisses me off the most about this apology. Yes, there are some ele elements of it that you could see as, you know, positive or forward thinking. Sure, if you're not, look, if anyone who did not know the situation looked at this and read it and all they would see is oh, oh i apologize to britney and janet what for admit what the fuck you did and in detail and apologize sincerely for it if you can't say with your own mouth what you're sorry about you are not really that sorry well that admit it however call them yeah. arrange to meet up with them like, and the whole notes thing, like, he, oh, he I hate this, no app apo he, apologies. Yeah, he posted it from his notes app on his phone. It's not like a video. It's not, you know, anything like that. He posted it as a note, like a picture of his notes app. And I'm like, literally anyone could have written this, get on fucking IG live, post a video or something, or at the very least call these women and apologize that's a whole lot more sincere than some, like, performative Instagram post. It's it, performative. That's exactly what it was. It was performative. It was damage control. And even if, like, have the private conversation and then don't fucking talk about it. He probably would have been better off not addressing it, in my opinion. Justin Timberlake is a piece of shit. And let's not also forget that in 2007, the year of our Lord Brittany, the year of the breakdown... He did an interview with, I believe it was GQ, maybe? I don't want to source the wrong magazine, but it was some. It was one of those major magazines. And one of the photos that he posed for in the magazine was, because you know he had the buzz cut back then. I don't know if he still yeah. rocks that or not. It was him with a um, razor shaving his own head. This was the same year Brittany shaved her head. I'm sorry. I just want to look this up because I don't know that I've ever seen this. Wow. What so the yeah, fuck? and he has also indirectly dumped on her for her Vegas residency. He has made comments about how people who do Vegas residencies are um, has-beens or washed up or something along those lines. I'm probably misquoting. Tell that here, to Elton John and Celine Dion. Like what the fuck? Something <laughs> shady like that. Yeah, Justin Timberlake is just a piece of shit. Like he's just period. jealous. Because he couldn't get one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. Oh. I, I also think it's funny that he cheated on his wife in public, like, a year ago? Did he? 
and that was talked about for for approximately five minutes (laughs) yeah (laughs) but it didn't last long at all britney spears cheats on him one time after he's cheated on her multiple times and he builds a career off of it or a solo career at least nsync was already a thing but yeah he he jump started his solo career by vilifying britney spears And I'm sorry, back on to the, you know, Justin cheats on his wife, hardly anything gets said, but God forbid that someone cheats on him. That fucking Diane Sawyer interview. Oh my God. Oh my God. The only reason why I'm wearing this shirt is because I could not get a custom shirt in time that said, fuck you, Diane Sawyer. What did she said something? It was like you really hurt Justin. What did you do to him or something no, like that? Yeah, at like, first she well, she was like, well, we've got to get into the Justin thing. Well, you don't have to. You don't have to. You're Diane Sawyer. You're capable of talking about very intelligent things. First off, not gossip mag drama. Thank you, thank you. She's like, we have to get into the Justin thing, and then. Justin was quoted as saying blah 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 or something so so what 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 did you do to cause that behavior oh that like, interview right that yeah. one and there. yeah and then not only blaming her for uh, if you know god forbid she breaks Justin's heart also in that same interview blames Britney Spears for people being mad at her because they have to actually parent their children yeah and Britney made a very, right. very, very the, point. The like, well, lady I'm not... that wanted to shoot Britney. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, wasn't she a politician of some sort? Or she a was wife a of... governor's wife, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it I like how Britney, s- said I like with how her Britney mouth, did it... say, um, um, I shouldn't be the one to raise your child or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yes. I'm not the one parenting yes. your children. Yeah. Saying that, sh- yeah, saying, because it's not your responsibility. And... and how about that fucking predator, Matt Lauer? Having the nerve to tell Britney Spears she was inappropriate in an interview. Like, yes. I cannot believe. That, oh. It's so serendipitous. Oh it is so God. serendipitous how that has aged, by the way. So serendipitous. Which is not well. <laughs> None at all. Quite a lot of the uh, the old TV appearances, as I was saying, uh, some of the big ones at the very <sighs> beginning I was watching. And, and I literally sat here and I was like, now that would not go today. Like, it, it some of the stuff that was said, it would not uh, slide today. Like, it just um, would not. We, we, we've got to talk about your breasts. That interview when, um, when she, I think she was 10. Yeah. And that old guy was saying, first oh, yeah, of all, you have really pretty eyes. Do you have a boyfriend? What about me? Yeah. I'm, what about <laughs> me? I'm not bad. And I, I literally said, and I cringed. I was like, what? Yeah. You just couldn't say that today. And like, Emma just said, like, we need to talk about your breasts and it's like bitch you're not my doctor like fuck off like, and like, she was a teenager well, I, don't I don't know I mean Ryan you were too young Dougie I don't know if it like hit the airwaves over there as much as it hit I, over here if it was but, if it was regarding them I didn't pay much attention <laughs> well there was there was this fascination when Britney first rose to stardom about mm-hmm. her virginity like, that was all anyone talked about for the first several years of her being famous. Same with Jessica Simpson. Why? And they did... Like, the virginity thing was a huge Why? deal. And I remember, and I and I do remember them kind of speaking about this in the documentary. Like, this was a time when, you know, um, Clinton and Monica Lewinsky, you know, that whole scandal broke. So there's this whole new culture of sex that was happening. And by the yeah. way, if you have the time to watch Monica Lewinsky's Lewinsky's interview with John Oliver on YouTube, do that. She was also someone who was done way fucking dirty. She was absolutely preyed upon, period. Just, and and I mean, just in the same way, Britney was preyed upon too. Just on a way, way bigger scale. Mm. Yeah, America had a really dirty fascination with virginity back then. I don't, it was really weird to come off the heels of the Clinton thing, like Amber said, and to just be immersed straight into this new generation of, like, pop stars and boy bands and things like that, where 
everyone's talking about virginity and saving themselves from marriage and the whole thing with Jessica Simpson was that she like married Nick Lachey and they were like the perfect you know star couple because she was a singer he was in a boy band and then they got married and she lost her virginity to him it's so sweet and then Britney it was the same thing except I remember when Britney was doing the same deal with the virginity it was like a different tabloid every week at the grocery store like oh we heard britney secretly lost her virginity to so and so and i'm like why why is Who this cares? such a piece of conversation yeah, no, no i mean it was so weird but Where i mean even then sh- sorry oh honey but it's like the, it's like the documentary set i don't know who it was enjoying it but it's like they said it was at the time really when sex was being spoken about in a whole new way right after the Monica Lewinsky situation that's when it, everybody really started to approach this topic a lot more regarding everybody and not only that I don't know if it was mentioned in this documentary or if I saw it or something else somebody said you know yeah. you don't have royalty in America but we've got pop stars yeah no that yeah. was in the documentary awesome. in the first half and hour anyway of what I've watched <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know I don't even know if this particular interview got mentioned in the documentary, but I know that there was one interview. I'm sorry. I'm going back to Justin Timberlake. I remember there was one interview that he did. I don't know who it was that interviewed him, but they were basically saying, and this was, I'm assuming, after him and her broke up. It wasn't that particular radio interview that I know that they played for sure, but they had made the insinuation that Brittany had still said that she was a virgin or something, and all he said was, yeah, sure. We'll go with that. Sure. And he was so fucking smug about it. Do you, do you just please tell me you remember what I, I, I don't remember about. that, but it's pretty on brand for fucking Justin Timberlake at this point. But like the, th- the thing about it is like the way that the way that men were asked these questions and the way that women were asked these questions and how that they were expected to answer. They were asking the with men those genders like it was this monumental feet like it was a conquest huge, like yeah a conquest and then yeah. the women it's like oh are you still a virgin oh well you said you said you were gonna wait until marriage so what's the deal like it, it's like the men were celebrated for it but the women were like chastised there goes my camera fuck it oh god <laughs> um and like, but when <laughs> that whole yeah when Britney hit the scene and then the Monica Lewinsky thing and sex was more talked about, that, I noticed, that is when they really started to focus on how women were dressed and how they behaved to what type of person they must be yes. because of all yeah. that. That's why we're so fucked up now is fucking because of that whole... Yeah. With Britney, it was such a massive shift. It almost it It almost felt overnight. I remember it. Like, because, I mean, I've, I've grown up with Britney. When her first album came out, I was seven years old. I don't, I don't remember life before Britney, as dramatic as that sounds. <laughs> I literally don't. <laughs> um, I just, I don't. Um, that sounds spot on. But it's like, that first album came out, she was, she was very young, she was still a teenager, she had the whole, like, baby thing going on, and then Oops, I Did It Again came out. It was a little... It was a little edgier, but it wasn't, like, inappropriate or whatever. That was, like, I think maybe two years after, a year or two after her first album. Anyway, but then 2003, I believe it was, when Britney's self-titled album came out. That was, like, the major shift. It was, like, there was Oops, I Did It Again, which was still somewhat innocent. Still pretty, you know, bubblegummy. Yeah. And then two years later, well, two or three, I, I don't, timelines, whatever. But anyway, it's like she, she leaves out in this oops, I did it again kind of theme, I guess. And then she returns a couple years later with Britney and it's I'm a slave for you. And it's like all these risque outfits and this, these provocative outfits. And she's dancing with a snake at the VMAs half dress. And then she's like also dancing at some other awards show in like a nude bodysuit and like just like super sex. It was just so sudden, I felt like. Yeah. 
Like, it was oh such a break away from what we had known of her so far. And it seems to... I'm, like, getting chills thinking about it. I'm so excited. Dude, I love Brittany her so was, much. <laughs> Brittany, was, Brittany was a thousand percent in our bioawakening for sure. Uh, yeah. And I get my point in that was I forgot it, like, halfway along the way because I was thinking about what it was like to see her like that. <laughs> but, um, no, I when, when Brittany came out, because that was back when they still did the commercial on TV for albums that were coming out, or CDs that were coming out. And I remember I was at my grandparents' house one day after school, and there was a commercial on TV for the Britney album, and obviously the the headlining track was I'm a Slave for You. So that was like the the music video that they played for the commercial. My grandparents were like, oh my god, she's trash. Oh my god, what happened to her? That's so inappropriate. And then my, you know, my grandpa's in his recliner like, she sounds like a dog. And I'm like, <laughs> I never really like a what a dog and like I kind of get it like in a way it's like what but then in another way it's like yeah I don't... okay I see that <laughs> I <don't... laughs> in a way going like just <laughs> going off of what you said there how she's you know, how she had, you know, um, Oops and Did It Again, and then the the two-year gap, and then I'm a Slave. That, thinking of it to some more recent artists, I guess you could say, sort of have followed on in a similar sort of way. Um, any new artist that approaches onto the scene starts out very, I guess you could say, in quite, you know, innocent or tries to give off that vibe because they knew they're trying to get onto the scene and notice but then once testing the waters yeah but then when they seem to have re- I, 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 I don't want this to sound wrong or discriminate in any way so if, if it comes out wrong I apologize in advance but I'm, I'm not thinking it through as I'm speaking it as we learned from the last one um, it's once they seem to reach a certain level uh, they know they they can almost push the bar a little bit higher until they know that one point because at the end of the day, at the end of the day sex sells that's why they say it, sex sells. Yeah. They want to reach that level where they and then I mean, know they can be... What's the word? Um, oh, I can't think of the word now. But y- yeah, y- you get where I'm going with it. They want to try and get no, that and I No, and I do, and What's I like, feel like... And I feel like a good a part of that, like, logic can be applied to other celebrities who have fortunately came out on the other side than Britney Spears. Like, a fucking... Uh, oh, my God. I, Miley Cyrus... Yeah. Started out on the Disney Channel. God, I love her. Yeah, I had you too. (laughs) But, I mean, and I think, what, like, Demi Lovato also, she started on Disney too, right? I don't know. I think so. Okay. But, I mean, like, other stars like that, I mean, I, yeah, I I get it. I I get that kind of thinking. Because you're starting, especially if you come off of a platform like Disney, I know, well, yeah, Britney, yeah, I, I almost completely disregarded the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. But especially when you're coming off of a platform like Disney, Disney has this, you know, uh, moniker of being wholesome, family, content, fun for everyone, marketable to children. Oh. So, I mean, of course, you don't necessarily want to push sex on children, but oh. eventually the older... Yeah. Britney was yeah. marketed as a sex thing from the beginning. Oh, like, she oh, she 1000% one one was fed it. Like they knew what they were doing putting her in those costumes for baby one that more time. I mean that girl I outfit. Mean, that might sound like weird on my part, but I feel like they absolutely no, I f- were no. totally That's uh, the I, I I I agree. Yeah. I feel like she was fetishized you need a dress from like the beginning. This. You need a Sing this sort of style. You need to dance like this. You need to do this, this, this. That's the, the only way problem. you're going to be successful. And I mean, I doesn't even matter how about that great your voice is, or you sing this style better. You need to sing this sort of style. You need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. Otherwise, you're the not. The problem going to be yeah, and that. I talk, and I talked about that in my Free Britney episode when she was starting out her sing. She wanted to go a completely different vibe than what record labels wanted her mm. to start recording, and then they were like, uh, no. We're going to give you some voice lessons and you're going to start singing like this. Because if you, you saw on her star search and whenever yeah, she was on the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, she had a more soulful presence and deepness to her voice. And then she comes out with Baby one more time. That When I heard mm. the, 
the the, the first video that was cl- uh, played when she was what ten years old. Um, yeah. I've never heard her sing like that because all the stuff I've heard from her has obviously been, well, y- yeah. Okay, you need to deep dive. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. Well, the, 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 my final thought on the whole thing. The okay, not not my final thought period but um the the problem i think is that they told her to dress one way and then act another way dress like you're asking for it but then act like you're a virgin so i think that kind of conflicted for her in a lot of ways yeah but um i think that the whole virginal act i think that she got very tired of it and people were chastising her for it anyway so she was just by the time britney came out she was like fuck it if this I'm gonna is what they want to the see, curve. this is what I'm going to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. As far as what you guys were saying with her voice goes, because we did get into that mm. in the original Free Britney episode. Yeah. Um, I've also, I don't think it was mentioned, but I have also learned that, okay, so she posts Instagram videos of herself singing sometimes. Um, I, I don't think this was mentioned before. But when she posts videos of herself singing, which is, it's rare, but um, one thing that comes to mind is she posted a video of herself singing, I can't, what is it called? I can't help falling in love. By yeah. No, I did Elvis. talk about that. Yeah, by Elvis, you did? Yeah. I did talk about that. Well, yeah. quite a few people have um, covered that, but yeah. It was sped up and a bunch mm-hmm. of people ripped it off of her Instagram and actually slowed it down to reveal... Yeah. Her, which I, I watched the video I went back and watched it and it's obvious in the one that she posted that whoever's holding the camera is moving a little too fast yeah so it's it's obviously been sped up to um, conceal her true voice and she also posts videos sometimes of her singing but she's got a snapchat filter over herself mm-hmm. so she does one of the snapchat filters with like the little the little dog ears or whatever with a voice changer and she'll sing like yeah. that and people have, there's a way, I guess, to remove the, the Snapchat filters. Um, so people will rip her videos off Instagram, remove the Snapchat filters, slow it down a little bit, and then they have her true voice. And it is nothing like what we've ever been given, mm. ever. Oh, yeah. I don't know yeah. why. I don't know why she, because with the Snapchat filter thing, it seems like she's scared for people to hear her real voice. So well, when, I, when I saw that video of her as a 10-year-old singing, it was like, that's not the vit Britney that I've heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heard through all the years, like that is completely different. Yeah. So much better. So yeah. much better. Just full and of at, soul and, and energy. 10. And she was like, singing from her whole body yeah. in that. Yeah. Like, it's just so. We- I don't know if she's been made to feel bad about her voice <laughs> by those around her. I don't know if maybe she's not allowed to use her. I don't know. I don't know why it's she wouldn't cause be allowed. <laughs> it's it's probably been because she's been told for so long, this is how you need to do it if you want to be yeah. successful. It's she probably thinks in that, her head. Yeah, that her own natural voice is not good enough. Not good That's because yeah. it's been it's just so pounded to her. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. Um. So people need to start telling it. Forget what they're telling you. Listen to us. Sing naturally. You'll do so much better. Go back to your roots. Yeah. Mm. And I know, I know, like, I know on the original Free Britney episode, I did make comments, like, about the videos that she posted on her Instagram of herself singing, and I'm like, she just does not hit the same. Like, it, it hearing her raw mm. is, like, super different. Like, it's just whatever. But now that it's more... I've see, I've witnessed more of the stripping of these videos and like the mm-hmm. actual slowing down to like real speed. It's like okay, she can fucking sing and she doesn't want everyone to know it apparently or her team doesn't want everyone to know. I don't know. I don't know what that situation is about. Um that's and, very strange. Yeah. And I have a question. Do you remember do you remember that cover that she did? At the concert that me and you were at, you ought to know. Yeah, do you yeah, know that that? Duh. Do you know? Do you know that that was the only time she did that cover on that whole fucking tour, and she did that completely raw. That was like, and really? you know, she's 
Yes, and that I baby <laughs> I was there was someone by else it. that there was someone oh there was someone but, else that same year that covered that same song because I posted a, it actually came up on my Facebook memories a couple months ago I posted a status and it oh, God I can't remember who it was it, it was Britney and someone else covered that song the sa- around that's the same around the same time and I'm like song? yeah and I'm like why is everyone suddenly covering this song like what's yeah. going on. That was the only time that she covered that song on that tour, and she sang it completely raw. All of the other, I mean, from the rest of the performance, we can assume was lip synced, which right. was fine. Except I don't, every time, I don't think she lip syncs every time. I, I I I don't quite remember. I I'm gonna be honest with you. I remember that as one of the sexiest nights of my fucking life. So I barely remember it. Unfortunately, I wasn't Dude. I wasn't like intoxicated or anything. I just it no. Was so I was long, I was intoxicated by Britney. <laughs> true, true. I do want to say, though, I, stage, I do you? feel like, um, talking about her songs now, I, I do feel like she's been leaving us breadcrumbs this whole time, and not just in terms of the conservatorship, in terms of what's been happening to her the entire mm-hmm. career. Um, I rewatched the Every Time video not too long ago. That was harrowing. Um... Which, it was dark when it came out, but, like, I don't know. It's, all of her you stuff just hits different now. It's like... You, yeah, you didn't saying, have the same understanding. Yeah, everything now has much more meaning because we have more facts. We know more of the truth behind it. So you can see the symbolism in everything that you look now. So, You're basically see, looking at it from a different thing, angle. This yeah. is the thing that fucking frustrates me, is at the time that all this was happening, and then at the time that the publicity was the way that it is, Britney was purposely painted as a certain picture we yeah. all looked at it we all looked at that picture and said yep that's what it is and we didn't read further into yeah. it we didn't ask any fucking questions we just went with it so now we're now that we know one more information we're dialing back we're looking at things differently and it's like oh fuck things were there the whole time and we were point like we were our heads were purposely turned a different direction yeah. I'm not That's what's gonna, just like, so fucking frustrating. And, you know, you like everyone knows, like, it's very rare, if ever, that she actually writes her own songs. You know, she's a pop star. Mm-hmm. She doesn't, that's not really. But, like, that's not what going, they do. Like, going, going so far back as, like, Lucky, you know she didn't write Lucky, but it was still very relevant to her life. Like, even, like, listening to that song now, I, like, I get a little misty because I'm like, damn, like, did she know, like, back then? Like, what was going to be going on? Or, like, was it already going on? And then, like, the Every Time music video, it's like... I think that was, like, right after her and Justin... I think that was her response to his Cry Me A River music video. Her Every Time video was. Because his was like, oh, like, you know, whatever, fuck you. Like, Cry Me A River. Like, you cheated on me. And then she released this video where she's basically, like, heartbroken. And the entire video... It's, I mean, it's about real life Britney Spears. She's, like, being chased by paparazzi the whole video. Like, she can't get away from them. Like, she, you can tell she feels lonely. She's fighting with her boyfriend. And then... And didn't, didn't they have to redo parts of that video? Because if I'm not mistaken, originally it was written to where at the end she actually committed suicide. Yes, I was gonna, yes. Okay, so yeah, it was originally the idea that she was gonna kill herself at the end of the video but i guess the team or whoever was shooting it found that idea to be too dark so they rewrote it to be that um one of the paparazzi like hit her in the head with the camera and then she got back to her hotel room got in the bathtub and died yeah like lost consciousness from the head injury like bled out from the wound yeah movies with that i can understand a music video not so much especially with something like that that was a sad music, and that was like, that was like seventeen years ago. I mean, God, that was almost two decades ago. It's like she's yeah. been like, like I said, it's like she's been dropping breadcrumbs this the whole time, way, yeah. and no one has ever, mm. until now. And I'm glad it's not too late because honestly, I remember being a teenager back when the whole head shave umbrella thing happened, and thinking, God, she's not gonna live till next year. Mm. She's not gonna be yeah. alive this time next year. I really think the media tried to set her up as our generation's Marilyn Monroe, and it did not pan out. Hmm. I think everyone expected her to be the big, great celebrity loss, and she wasn't, which is great. 
Yeah, no, the paparazzi and the media and everything just yeah yeah they made her who she is in every oh, way <laughs> today yeah. for sure yeah I'm sitting here pouring this and the lids on <laughs> 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 look at you go how many bottles have you had already just yeah <laughs> just this one <laughs> um so I guess this question is more relevant to... Oh, no, I did want to mention to you guys. I actually, I saw this article. Literally, it was like two days ago. It was because of all the the documentary stuff. I don't know if, Amber, you heard about it or not. But there was a time in like the early 2000s. I think it was like... mm, I want to say it was 2004, 2005, somewhere like that. It was definitely well before the meltdown. Um, this, this big radio show, I think it was in Los Angeles, they had a caller one day, and the person on the call claimed to be Britney, and they said that they were Britney Spears, and that they had a single that they had been working on, and they wanted the host to play it on their show. And the host wrote it off as being a prank call, because obviously why the fuck would Britney fucking Spears... Yeah call into a radio show and ask a DJ to play her song. Yeah. So they hung up on her, treated it as a prank call. This bitch shows up at the fucking like radio place. Station? The radio station. What? Britney Spears shows up with her dog and her bodyguard and walks in and is like, I just called. You guys hung up on me. I have this song that I want you guys to play. And she hands the DJ this, like, unmarked CD. Like, there's, it's just one of those, you know, yeah. transparent cases. Like, nothing on it at all. And she hands it to him. She's like, I've been working on this. I want you guys to play this. And he's like, oh, sorry. We thought you were a prank call. <laughs> As he plays it on the radio. It's this song called, and you can, you guys can Google this and find it for yourselves, too. But it was a song called, um, I think it was called Mona Lisa. And it was from an album that she claimed to be in the works. It was called, oh God, what was it called? It was something like a, about a doll. Um, but it, it's it's believed by many that it was kind of like really a solo pro, like an actual solo project by her. Like she was working on something on her own to kind of speak out about the things that were happening in her right. life. Um. But yeah, the the DJ, he played the song on the radio and it was from what I gathered, it it was about a woman with like very beautiful facade, a lot of shit going on underneath. Um and wanting to feel like she could be free, like she was imprisoned. And there was like there was like this whole album and god, I can't remember what it was called. You know um, what? What? It's funny that you're bringing... Okay, so my Free Britney episode. When we came up with a lyric game. Don't remind me. Original Doll. That's what the album was called. Okay, there was like a whole... Like, because everything was categorized by like each album, right? When I was looking up the lyrics. Right. And there was like a whole, there was a whole category that was like unreleased music and, you know, stuff like that. And I'm like, if it's been unreleased, to be sure, none of these fuckers are, have heard it or, you know, I, you know, at the, I do remember Mona Lisa being on there. Yeah. It, yeah, it was called Original Doll. Um, it was set to be the darker sequel to In the Zone, which I believe came out in 04, 05. Um, yeah, and it, it never saw the light of day. And as far as I know, Mona Lisa was never, ever played besides that one instance where Brittany marched that shit right up to that radio station herself. And after that, her manager was like, um, we have no plans to distribute this song and no plans whatsoever to move forward with this album. Mm. And so everyone now refers to it as her lost album or her forbidden album. They, everyone speculates that she was going to blow the entire entertainment industry out 
with this album. Burn it to the ground. Exactly. And that's why her team nixed it, pretty much. Yeah. I, I feel if she can get out of the conservatorship and get away from all of that, her production, management, all those teams, start afresh, she's just going to completely rewrite what she's... Yeah, I, f- I feel like she, she like needs some kind of teams in order, though, because well, it's like... Well, yeah, but she needs a new team. Not the ones that have See, been controlling yeah. her, everything like that. Someone that wants her to be her. Right. What <laughs> I'm scared of, and I'm only scared because of some of the things that were said in that documentary. One, the judge ruling that she could not even hire her own attorney. That is that They fucked. had to appoint That's her one. Fucked. Yeah, that. No. I mean, luckily, yeah. I, I don't think that Ingham lawyer is her lawyer anymore. Thankfully, I, I don't believe. Um... But that was fucking fishy to me. The, I'm scared that this goes deeper than it can be saved right now. Like, and I and I know this week's you know announcement with her conservatorship. You know that Jamie now has to at least split. Like that is that's good. That's going in a good direction. It's not going to lead to a resolve. I'm getting. Big I'm vibes scared it goes that... so deep that it can't be resolved. Well, it's like. What what weirded me out about that Vivian Thorian interview was that, okay, first of all, I didn't really see that ending coming, first of all, but um, <laughs> mainly it kind of felt weird whenever the interviewer asked if she'd ever worked a conservatorship case that the conservatee had successfully terminated the yeah. conservatorship. And she said, no, never nope. in my career have I personally worked a case where the conservatee terminated the conservatorship and then it's like at the end of her interview oh by the way after this vivian went on to work with jamie spears i'm like are you fucking kidding me like yeah what (laughs) there goes my camera um well i've got one thing that that i picked up on which i I don't know if anybody else has has noticed this or not but it it, it, when (laughs) but when i saw i generally had to sit here and i was like wait what because uh, Jamie Spears has, has come out and obviously addressed the, you know, the, the when he come out to express um, his thoughts to the Free Britain movement. It's a conspiracy He's, theory. Yeah, it says it's conspiracy theory. And we can believe what they like, but it's all bullshit. And he says, it's not up to me. It's up to the court of California to decide the fate of my daughter. I'm like, hang on a minute. What? First of all, you're her father who has hardly ever been in her life apart from when all of a sudden the conservatorship, conservatorship was brought up. But secondly, now all of a sudden that you are in control, it's not your decision, it's up to the court, it's up to the court of California. What? I it, feel it was like... that bit itself that just fucked me over. I'm like, well, hang on a minute, you're either in control and want decisions or you don't want anything to do with it at all just because it's, just because it's too dark for anybody else to actually know what's going on. Like, sh- What? I just feel like after um, I, after hearing that the judge or would not let her pick her own attorney, I feel like the judge is in her pocket as well. Which I say in her pocket because realistically, everyone is in her pocket, whether they're yeah. on her side or not. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. She's got no she, choice I mean, in the matter. She's yeah. paying for the team for Jamie's attorneys that are, you know, fighting to keep her in the conservative. And their lawyers. Yeah. Well. You so. think you you mm. think Mister My Daughter is going to buy me a boat can afford his own attorney? No. No, oh! he cannot. I have an Which... in- I have an interesting little little factoid. I just saw it today. I I forgot to make a note of it. But um, so Britney Spears' childhood home, Jamie Spears just sold it in Kentwood, Louisiana for $280,000 as of today. It's been for sale, I think, since, I think it's a June 2020. It it just closed today. What makes it $280,000? Yeah. Is it a, is, is it, is it, is it a huge home? Well, is it no, a big home? no, no. Because, I mean, it's, you have it's to think just about 200 200- it's just two hundred eighty thousand dollars because it was Britney Spears. Because of the oh, namesake, sure. it'd be it'd just be for sure. the name yeah. value. That'll be it. 
I mean, you cool. think about it, she cool, comes cool, cool, from cool, 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 very cool. humble beginnings, right? I mean, yeah. they yeah. pretty much bankrupted themselves to make sure that Britney got famous. So it's a very, I'm sure, I haven't looked at the square footage or anything, but I'm sure it's a very and, humble home with a little boosted value because it's Britney Spears' childhood home. And Who's real that? quick, talking about humble beginnings, can we please pour one out for Felicia? Felicia... You a real one. You are a real one, bitch. You are a real one. Was she the one at the beginning of the documentary? They did you dirty too. System? Yeah. Yes. And like I even remember like seeing like tabloid photos and stuff like when I was younger. Like you did not see Britney <laughs> with <laughs> Jesus fucking <laughs> Christ. <laughs> but you did not see Britney without Felicia. For the longest time, I did think that Felicia was Britney's mom because anytime you saw Britney, that's who the fuck was with her. That yeah. was a real one. Yeah. I feel like if any information got to Britney about this documentary, it was through Felicia somehow. I feel like she would have had to, she would have oh found a way God. to get it to Britney. I like how when, um, that's one part I do remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> when Lynn asked her if she could be her guardian, basically, mm. because they couldn't, yeah. she couldn't move to yeah. LA because of um, the youngest sister. Um, mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, I've just um, quit my job. So yeah. And she said, I could do it for three months. <laughs> 23 years later. 23 years later. She's yeah, she did it for there. years. <laughs> She was she was always like a fucking ride or die for Britney, and I feel like if Britney, uh, yeah, oh, no, I, I feel I like forget. that was the only real person in her life. Before I forget, because I literally just forgot about it in that fifteen <laughs> second time span. I don't want to forget it again. Um, I rewatched the documentary. I tallied the Rose references and images in the documentary. There are more than a hundred and fifty oh, rose imageries used in the documentary, which if you're not like super familiar with the Britney situation, I will explain for like the last, I don't know, year, Britney has had these bizarre photo shoots in her yard or like wherever and i like in know, front of a blank wall yeah <laughs> like just this this these weird pictures and i mean i they're most honestly they're most prominent within the free britney movement because it's kind of with those photo shoots where the whole thing started i mean the tiktok video of her in the little yellow shirt and anyway so she keeps posting these photos from these shoots and occasionally she will mention that the photos are part of something called project rose which for a long time like people like researched this to find out what it could really be and a lot of people found that project rose could be like a um sex trafficking like a rescue kind of thing in terms of sex trafficking However, since this documentary came out, a lot of people noticed all the roses in the documentary. And so I decided to rewatch and count for myself. I had myself a little piece of notebook paper and a pen, and literally every time a rose appeared on the screen, another tally, another tally, another tally. There, like I said, there were more than 150 references or images of roses used wow. in this documentary. So there is a conspiracy that this possibly could be the Project Rose that Brittany has been referring to. Possibly. To come to think of it, the, there's a lot of roses like in the background, and it's like, have, yeah. may, which it was. It was my concern that could this really be the Project Rose that she's been talking about? And I one thousand percent think yes. Well. I don't anymore, and I'll tell you why in a second, but it it was kind of like waiting on pins and needles for her to post after the documentary, because in the documentary, you saw she was supposed to make an announcement in Vegas, Yeah. and she straight up walked, Just walked walk off. Yeah. What that? And then she gets punished for two months. She gets shoved into a mental health facility for two months because she didn't do the announcement. 
Okay, so I was worried that if this was the true Project Rose, she was going to get punished for it, for her involvement. Like, it was going to finally be found out that she was involved in this. So, obviously, I was watching her Instagram like a hawk. I'm, like, waiting for her to post literally anything to indicate that she's not been shoved into another treatment facility for being involved in this. Which she posted two or three days after the documentary came out. So, it's like, a little sweat off my shoulders. But, um, I don't know. I just thought that was a little strange. But, now there are articles surfacing saying that she's been feeling very emotional about the documentary i can't imagine that she has been allowed to see it i really can't so i don't know how true these articles are um but there are articles saying that she's been very emotional after seeing the documentary and she didn't realize how many people are in her corner and um she's been working on a documentary of herself and she's hoping to get it released, but Jamie could be an obstacle if if he finds out some of the finer details and he's going to want to get his hands on it and it could kind of, um, I guess, convolute whatever she's working on. Mm. So I, I think maybe I now th now that I saw that, even though I don't know how true it is, I don't necessarily think anymore that this documentary was project rose i think maybe she's working on something personally that could be project rose okay and there yeah. are there are a couple things that i want to hit on hint on hit on hit on whatever um so i did see one thing in the conspiracy group and i know that it was in a conspiracy group on facebook and i know that it was something that i briefly touched on in my episode and I, I touched on it mainly as a joke, and I'm going to touch on it a little bit as a joke here now, just to kind of cut it up a little bit. Um, someone said, uh, again, that Brittany probably died a long time ago. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on, no, hold on. No. Hold on, hold on. Someone, no. <laughs> just, just, listen, just for listen. To be with someone that said, no, 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 someone no, no. said that this is an AI Brittany, and that's why she's being owned. No, I, I I don't I, mean, I don't no. I don't believe that obviously. No, yeah, are you trying to get my blood that, pressure up? Oh my god! I can't even take some medication. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just no. letting you know what another stranger said. I mean, some of her no. videos could be very like AI robotic like. Cause some of her recent posts on IG. They can, but... and I'm oh, and I'm I totally and I totally think that she's doing it on purpose to draw attention to herself and her situation. Oh, for sure. That's me. I don't think that she's doing it to be dismissed i think i think she's doing it with a purpose i think she's do a smart we, fucking lady do we think that she is actually posting on her accounts oh you mean somebody else is doing because i i don't i don't I, that that part i don't know That's... okay so like okay i've been really back and forth on it like when all this free britney stuff started and i like i started really looking at her posts i was like there's no way this is so Boomery, like the stuff that she yeah, posts. very like, cringy. There's no way the hottest pop star on the planet would post I this think kind of stuff. She, mm. I and I, and I think she's doing it to be cringy, to because I, I think she's doing it to draw attention to her and her situation. This is a girl who said, "I don't want anyone touching me anymore. I'm shaving my head." I. I think, honestly, I think this might be just stuff that she really likes, too. <laughs> I mean, like... Yeah. I, think she, I think she might be a big fucking mega nerd, and it's fine. I, she I, might be I awkward feel like her antisocial. Instagram it's cool. Feed, her Instagram feed is just... It looks like someone's Pinterest board. It honestly does. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just very, like, um, mom, mid to late 30s chic. It's just... It's very Pinteresty. But, I mean, I was in the boat for a long time where I thought that she was not posting on her own account. Because it was so, like, old person stuff. Yeah. Like, no offense to anyone listening, like but it's someone, just, like, it's just not hip at all. Like, someone, then, yeah, someone who was trying <laughs> seriously hard to be within the lingo and say, yeah, it, like, yeah. someone who was trying very, very hard. Yeah, but no, now, I completely agree with that, too. Like, I've been, I've been listening to that podcast that was on the documentary, that Britney's Grand podcast, and, like, I'm about 30-something episodes in, and the way they dissect the episodes, a lot of it makes sense that it's her posting. I mean... She really is, like, a very simple, humble, southern girl. I mean, it's 
in my opinion now, it's very realistic that it's actually her posting these things. I mean, she might find these things on... Uh, one thing that they did mention, or they do mention a lot on that show, is that she uses a lot of stock photos on her Instagram feed. Which is kind of strange. Um, very. I, I <laughs> It is for anybody I too, think, but... I think our Britney is an odd bird, but I think she is also in a situation where she's not really in a situation to not use a lot of stock photos. Um, <laughs> it's not like she can leave her house ever. No, right. It's true. So, and one thing, you know, her one traveling thing that is I... limited. Go ahead, babe. I'm sorry. Oh, I just, all I said was her traveling is limited, so that was it. I mean, yeah, you're right. The only thing, the only other thing that I want to say, and it is 1,000% an apology, because when I looked into Free Britney, I looked at it completely 100% as a conspiracy theory, and I plugged it as a conspiracy theory, I True. led our season I led our season with it as a conspiracy theory. And it's because I didn't I didn't know a whole lot about the situation. And even some of the things that I mentioned that they kind of touched on a little bit in the documentary, they even made like when they were talking about the voicemails and stuff. Cause I heard that voicemail too, and it wasn't substantiated, so I didn't mention it in the podcast. That I listened one to from it. The paralegal. I listened to it. Right. Like, and yeah. they even note that I in the I listened to it in the, in the last docu- week or so. She sounded, she sounded normal. I mean, not, God, not normal. But, like, she sounded <laughs> like she was in a good state of mind in that voicemail. Yeah, yeah. The only um, thing that I noted in the voicemail was that she sounded like she could have possibly been hiding because she was talking so low. She was talking low. She was talking fast. But she was also... She was coherent. Kind of, she was coherent. She sounded intellectual. She sounded like she knew what she was talking about. She was using decent vocabulary. It was not really the voicemail of someone who's doesn't have know. their shit together. Yeah. Or yeah. Either doesn't and, have and their even, shit together or is like stupid. Like it didn't. Yeah, but even of those. And even the voicemail of that paralegal, I heard that. I didn't mention that in the podcast because, and like they mentioned in that documentary, it wasn't 1,000% substantiated. Like, I can't know for a fact that that was the paralegal that said that. They got that voicemail anonymously. Right. And a lot of the documentary does touch on things that, you know, were alleged. And, you know, alleged doesn't always, alleged doesn't always mean conspiracy. So, if I contributed that to any facet... My bad. That was not my intention. I know a whole lot more now. And, yeah. It might free be Britney. against our... Yeah, free fucking Britney. It might not be... Or it might be against our brand or whatever, but I didn't for a second honestly look at that, your episode, as a conspiracy theory. Like, I mean, it's like... <laughs> right? I, I, just, I, I, I just... I have, like, I have, you know... Watching that like, documentary and having things unfold as they have this past week, like, it's been weighing on me. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, damn... I fucking marketed this whole movement as a conspiracy theory. And I mean, even Jamie Spears himself calls it a conspiracy theory. And that should have been my red fucking flag. (laughs) But I think yours was more along the lines of her, her subliminal messaging side of it. Like Mm -hmm. it's not a conspiracy theory that she's in a conservatorship. I, I think you're, maybe you were going more towards the direction of, is she trying to talk to us yeah yeah so because we like what they said in the documentary we we don't know what we don't know so yeah and fucking jamie spears hasn't re- responded to an interview jamie lynn spears hasn't responded to an interview lynn, lynn, spears, lynn spears hasn't responded to sam an interview Lutfi. sam Lutfi hasn't responded to an interview and we don't even know for a fact if britney got her communication mm. free right. that bitch Right. It's Britney, bitch. Free her. Um, I do want to go ahead and tack on in case... I, I know Amber mentioned at least one of these in her original episode, but um, in the conservatorship, Britney Spears has been at least one time grounded for mm-hmm. driving. Yep. Um, she has been grounded for going to the beach with a friend. Mm-hmm. She... I know we talked about her weekly allowance, but I don't remember if it was mentioned. Her weekly allowance is half of... 
um, Jamie's weekly allowance. He, but we don't know it, a dollar amount. Well, I believe it. It was said that he gets twenty five hundred a week, and she gets twelve hundred. Because yeah, he's Ridiculous. the fucking pop star. He's he's the fucking money maker in the family. He's the one with talent, right? So he he she should get twice the amount that. You, you know what? What one more thing that I just I just want to. How does everyone feel about her boyfriend? Oh, oh. I don't know. I, I figured I, you wouldn't know, Dougie. I, 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 okay, the Dougie you I, lost I, everyone. I'm sorry. Playing a game of cards or something whilst okay. you two went well, on. <laughs> okay. A I feel of like I, okay. I feel a like that there is a possibility that he could have been a hired on boyfriend, an asset of sorts for her image or whatever to make things look normal, and then maybe he got into it and was like, "Oh shit!" Like something here is not right and maybe he fell into it and actually developed feelings for Brittany. That is that's, my theory. That's kind of where I am on it. So a little bit of background for the boys. Okay, so she met her current boyfriend, Sam Asgari, on the set of her music video for Slumber Party? I oh. think it was. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Um, It was back in 2016. That was a hot, was a hot <laughs> she, video. Yeah, he played her love interest in that music video. That's where they met. They started dating in, like, January 2017. They've been together ever since, so they've been together a little over four years. Um, he is very good-looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He is very good-looking. He is a fitness trainer. His whole Instagram profile is just, like... <sighs> his workout posts and there's me rolling my eyes look at me <laughs> um what a freeze frame what a freeze frame <laughs> okay okay um, from the time that any better. anyway <laughs> so your it, camera knew then <laughs> his instagram is a lot of like self promo for like fitness stuff so it's a lot of like muscles and i'm not like crazy about his instagram but whatever um, he is, I think, only like twenty five or twenty six, and she is thirty nine. <laughs> Which he's is how old? Like, he's like twenty five or twenty six. Damn, good for him. Yeah, like I mean, in, in the in the bigger picture, it's not that big of a deal because they're both consenting adults. Like you know, so do you Brittany? like <laughs> but i i do feel the same way that you do amber like i for a long time i did think that he was potentially her handler or like a hired partner to keep her busy but now i'm kind of seeing it as maybe in the beginning he was a hired partner but they've been together so long it's like i'm kind of thinking that maybe it started out like that and he did actually end up falling in love with her and that's why he's also now speaking out about everything. Uh, I don't know. But he's very Maybe hot. so. He looks so good. And the stuff that they do together is so nerdy. It's like, you can't do that stuff with someone you're not in love with. <laughs> like, just some of the stuff that they post on Instagram, it's like... You, is you, tall, you really, like, you cannot do is, that with someone you don't have feelings you for. <laughs> like, he, it's just... he is tall, dork, and handsome. Yeah. <laughs> and she I'm posed... sorry, I'm thinking of how he looks physically, and I'm He's distracted. Like, where is he from? He's from Israel, or like somewhere like I have that? no idea, but they should make more of him. Um, he's, <laughs> yeah, I'm... <laughs> But I, I think it's safe to say that Brittany is a total dork. Like, she is the hugest dork in the world. And, like, he also kind of seems like a bit of a dork <laughs> in their Instagram posts. Or, like, ditzy, you know? So it's almost like a perfect match, which kind of makes me think they're an actual couple. But just some of the stuff that they post, I'm like, they're... You, you could not possibly do that unless you loved that person. Like, it's so embarrassing. It's so dorky. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. He's fucking... He's hot. I don't know. He, did I mention he was tall, dark, and handsome? And he's so big, dude. 
Like big. She, I think we've got the picture. Okay, I know she said that he was 25, but it at least takes 100 years to build muscles like that. This dude is like... <laughs> He makes her look so small. Brittany's like 5'4", so she's not that... She's only like two inches shorter than me. But this dude, like, but when she's she next to Sam, she's like so that tiny. big. <laughs> she looks so okay, tiny next to him. He is 26. He's about to be 27. And he's 6'2", so he's almost a foot taller than her. But, but he's also he, got the Brittany's, muscle bulk. Brittany's 40 this year. So. She's gonna... Yeah, she's gonna be 40 this year, but not until December. So she just turned 39. Okay. I don't like for my get husband it, to Brit. pick. Get Dude, it, Brit. Get it. I don't. I do not like for my mm-hmm. husband to pick me up, like physically. Like I don't like the idea of my feet being off the ground. Like, the whole <laughs> idea, it doesn't matter. The idea scares me. If this man did it to me, I would feel comfortable. <laughs> like, okay, I'm the same way, but I think it's because like looking at Sam and like looking at like how like much he works out and like how muscly he is, like he's literally 100% muscle. I feel like my problem with Charles picking me up is that I feel bad, like he's somehow straining himself. I don't feel like Sam would be straining himself. Because he's oh, like no. humongous. He's like a tree. It'd be like a tree. I just, me up. I don't feel, I don't like the idea of myself being off of ground. Like, I feel like it's I a have weight, it's trouble. a weight thing for me. It's no, 100% I just, a weight no, thing for me. For me. It's like a cord. It, it's, it's totally like a coordination like issue for me. I'm like, nope, this feels off. Like this way I don't fly. Like none of that. I like the ground but I would, I would, I'd be fine. I'd be no, fine. I have a weight <laughs> complex. So if Charles tries to pick me up, I'm like, oh, stop. I'm too fat. Stop. Like, like, you can't pick me up. But I, like with Sam, I think I would feel very safe. I'm sorry, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> She's calling your weight, Charles. I'd go, I'd go to sleep. I would go to sleep in his bicep. Go, Brittany. <laughs> you go, girl. Like, if this is like real and true, like, you, you Fucking go, Amber. You need to listen to that episode. Fuck that Justin. Okay. Well, Do you yes. think Justin looks like Justin that? No, the does fuck not he don't. look like that. Justin, Timberlake he don't compete. Could never. Could never. I know where we're going wrong. Yep. <laughs> I'm 25 just... and I am 100 times less the size of this dude. Like. <laughs> oh, honey, I I'm forgot almost you were twice here. his age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that fucking small. You just forget. Me and Amber are just in, me and Amber in this Sam Asgari world. It's like both of you guys on the left have just like phased out. Just, it's just me and Amber looking at each other and talking and like, <sighs> oh god. I'm gonna go make myself another drink. Tri- like another drink. Like fuck it. <laughs> well, if he has hired help, then he is damn fine hired help. But I yeah. don't imagine he'd be calling Jamie Spears a dick on social media if he I hired don't help. think that he would either, which is I, what has me convinced that he's... Yeah. I yeah. think that was kind of like the tipping point. Like, it was easy up until that point to believe that he was hired. But, like, now... <clears throat> oh. you so pretty. You good there, Jess? <laughs> Anyway, and I, I don't that mean that in the same way as when I say it's wrong. I knew that would come in. I was just a matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> so, does everyone feel a little bit more educated on Brittany now? I feel educated. Oh. I feel delighted that everyone has consumed the Brit- the free Brittany. Just I I I I feel that everyone has consumed this movement. I'm so glad that this documentary came out. I'm so glad that people are starting to love her the way that she deserves to be loved. Because at the end of the day, we all owe her an apology. Yes, Brittany is a wonderful person. That is very obvious. She is. She's literally. She's just a simple girl, y'all. She would just love to like go to Walmart and like pick out a nice shirt or like you know a pair of shoes or something. That's Brittany. That's Brittany. That's always been Brittany. Okay? So, like, whatever. Just fucking be nicer to her. Please. Leave Brittany alone. Brittany be Brittany. What was that joke? Eh? I, like, I have so much to say on this subject. Like, I almost want to start a podcast about it. But then I feel like it would be a ripoff of that other podcast. It yeah. probably would. 
Yeah, However, like... their whole podcast is about her Instagram posts. I feel like I could just talk about her forever. Would it be okay if Dougie and I sat that one out? <laughs> me, me and <laughs> Jess you know like nothing? <laughs> You're not invited. Yeah, me and Jess are going to start a separate podcast adjacent to Jard. It's just going to be an extension. I hope you don't mind me nominating you along with me, Dougie, but I just felt like it was rather Bitch. fitting. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Oh my god, I'm having so many thoughts right now. It's like Jard Jard presents Jess and Amber the series. So Bro. Would that just be Ja? Just Ja. Ja. <laughs> ja. 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 I just I have a Brittany lot of thoughts. Ja. I just have a lot of thoughts on Brittany. I just <gasps> I feel like this or one episode we... just doesn't do it. Ja, I mean, written. I mean, no. I mean, we you we could literally well, I say we you could could literally just go on about it for for as long as you want. So you're blue in the face because there's a because there's a lot of ground to cover. There is, and granted, look, it's me in the mirror. Uh, <laughs> granted, I'm pretty we... clueless about the situation, but that documentary was extremely insightful. There was a lot going on, and you could learn just a lot just from that single piece itself. Let alone everything else it dives into. So, yeah, you could go on about it forever. But even the things that it doesn't dive into, I feel like, okay, I'm going to say this one thing. I feel like Britney has always been targeted. I don't know why. Yes. 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 I feel, I feel like, because, okay, and this is even one example that wasn't covered at all in documentary. Okay. Does anyone remember the infamous kiss that she had with Madonna? Yes. Okay. Does everyone... Just forget that Christina also shared that same kiss, Okay, but no one fucking thing. talked about it. Here's the thing about that. Okay, so when that happened, Britney was still, like, super virginal, like, pop star Britney. But Christina was already, like, diving into her trashy realm when that happened with Dirty. So oh, no one right gave on it a that. second glance. No one gave it a second glance because they expected that of Christina. They did not expect that of Britney. Least of all, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> Who's a reaction cam I love. Because he's like sitting there like... <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> Yeah, it, it was because it, Britney was vilified because she had kept up this whole, like, image of herself. Well, her team had kept up this image of her being innocent and her being a virgin and yada, yada, yada. But, yeah, Christina had already, like, jumped off the deep end. That's why. That's fucking why. We, I'm that was the saying, hottest thing I've fucking... ever seen in my fucking life, okay? Thank you. Thank you. This is why I'm fine. <laughs> this isn't the sole reason, but it definitely helped the process. <laughs> it, 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 it's, okay. This solidifies why I'm by. <laughs> My family was so upset by that kiss, dude. Oh, I, I Which, wasn't. as a gay, I'm not as... <laughs> As a queer identifying person, same. Um, <laughs> um, I do feel like it was it was a little exploitative. Um, I feel like it was obviously done for to garner attention, which I I'm not a big fan of using like um, same sex pairings or things. We like don't that like as to queer bait, of, right? Queer baiting. I I I don't like it for that aspect. But God, my little imagination. But visually, it was fucking hot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Ryan's like, I know it was only six, but still. <laughs> <laughs> so at the time, I've got no fucking idea of what a reference you're on about. I genuinely don't. Which for a guy, you should, you would have think I would have known that. What? I don't, wh- where can I find I'm it? I'm sorry. I, don't, I need to what? see. Britney Madonna kiss, the 2003 yeah, VMAs. Just Google, just Google Britney dun, dun, Madonna dun, dun, kiss dun, right dun. now. I want to see his reaction. Like a virgin. Who? Touched for the very first time. Uh. <laughs> oh my God. Madonna was the groom and Britney and Christina were the brides. Brian's never seen the Britney Madonna kiss? No. 
No, you said I was six. Are, are you Googling it? Yeah, I, I, I'm on YouTube now. Oh my God, that was the best moment of my childhood. Jesus Christ. Is there a timestamp in the comments? Just, just watch, watch it. it. The whole thing is just... It's five minutes long. How long was I kissed? Okay, we'll just speed it up to the oh, kiss Oh, I've just then. seen a freeze frame of Justin's cam, so I've probably gone a bit too far. Hang on. I wonder if I can... If we... If we... If we live... If we... Or, um... If we do a video chat after this, I wonder if I can do it on that watch together thing. Oh, I bet you could. <clears throat> We're all just Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> You've never seen that? I've never seen it. Can I watch that again? I've never seen yes. this. Yes, yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. Holy shit. That's the yeah. beauty of just the internet, in my friend. You can watch that as many times as you want. Just to. in space. Oh my god, how have I not seen it? That is it. That, that, that is that, like one of the most hot, iconic right? Britney moments in history. I don't know. Other than the fact that, that it's Madonna, it's hot. Can I excuse myself? I have opinions about Madonna. Can Madonna, she's like, but she's still hot. I have opinions, though. I have opinions. I mean, though. opinions on who she I'm is. I'm sorry, but yeah, Justin's but fucking like, face physically, is brilliant. Physically, she's still hot. <laughs> like, I know she should be, I I, she I, focus I, more on the kiss, but his reaction is just... <laughs> Wait, no. hold on. Does that does that mean because very shortly after that, her and Madonna came out with a single, and the video for that was also <gasps> equally as hot? Did you not see that? Either? Oh, me against the music. I don't know if that was equally as hot, but it was pretty Let hot. Let me see you dance. <laughs> me, okay, I'm done. So you haven't seen the me against the music music video either. <laughs> Look at this man. He's the just various, yeah, yeah. The no. various reactions from just the audience. Flex. I think did it show Snoop Dogg? He was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> holy shit! I've I've honestly never seen that. That is. And Eminem is sitting there like. Oh yeah, that's just. Oh, his, that's how Eminem that's always, how he always looks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's normal for him. <laughs> okay, Eminem okay, always guys, looks like you guys. Okay, like we'll here. watch all of Britney's greatest yeah. hits in the video call, yeah, we but we have got to up. get off of here yeah. right now. <laughs> we have been going for almost an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so. We hope we have given you at least five dollars worth of entertaining content, <laughs> our beautiful patrons. We appreciate you so fucking much. We do. And if nothing else, you have just bore witness to Ryan bearing witness to the Britney and Madonna kiss for the very first time. Um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm glad my camera cuts off, I guess, there. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting! <laughs> Alright, we'll see you guys next month for next month's bonus yes, episode, next month. I reckon. <laughs> see you guys. Bye! For watching. Bye. And Fucking have a good night, everyone, except Jamie Spears and Justin Timberlake and <laughs> Diane Sawyer. <laughs> fucking fuck all you. <laughs> Bye. Oh, fuck.